I don't have a father. Yes, as sure as I'm standing here, there was a man involved in my conception, but my mom is the only parent I've ever known. It's not too tragic, I promise. I was conceived with the use of donor sperm from California, and I was essentially turkey basted into existence in a doctor's office on Park Avenue. <laughs> donor conception is a form of artificial reproduction that uses the sperm or egg of a donor to conceive a child. In 2000, my mom found herself in her 40s and still single, but she had always wanted to be a mother. Doctors told her that the longer she waited, the harder it would be to get pregnant, so she moved on to plan B. She found California Cryobank, which was supposed to be the best sperm bank in the country because they tested for the most hereditary and sexually transmitted diseases. Now, this bank also had an openness policy, meaning that once a donor-conceived person turned 18, they could reach out to the bank, which would facilitate contact with the donor. My mom understood that no child can have a say in their own conception, but by choosing to use a bank with this policy, she could give me, the hypothetical child, the option to reach out to my donor in the future. In the past, most parents using donors would plan to take the secret to their grave. Societal stigmas made people believe that using a donor was something to be ashamed of, so they would hide it. I wish I could say that these stigmas no longer exist, but the truth is that even when my mom was pregnant in 2001, a friend with genuinely good intentions suggests that she tell me my father had died. Now, they didn't say it, but the idea was to save me from the torment of being a bastard child. The harsh reality is that many parents have lied to their children, but these children have grown. We've recently begun to see a large gap in the community between adults who are just finding out that they are donor conceived and teenagers like me who have known our whole lives. I've come to realize that the internet is the cause of this divide because parents previously had a sense of security but now, with widespread accessibility to the internet and at-home DNA testing, there are no secrets. Every day, Facebook groups for donor-conceived people are growing as more and more people find out about this family secret. This past January, I finally decided to make a group for donor-conceived people who were interested in meeting in New York. When we finally met, I was amazed. All of these people were older than I was, yet among them I was an equal. Despite being only 16 years old, my story was as valid as the next. Unlike many of my newfound friends, I'm fortunate enough to have always known that I was donor conceived. My mom wanted me to know how I was born, so as soon as I was old enough to understand, she gave me the sex talk. Sperm, eggs, sex and all. This was the exact book that I got. <laughs> yeah. But in kindergarten, my uh, my classmates had gotten the when a mommy and daddy love each other very much version, but I took, it, I took pity upon themselves and I brought it upon myself to educate them. <laughs> yeah, parents weren't too happy, but if they couldn't understand their own existence, how could they understand mine? They couldn't. If you couldn't tell, I was a pretty imaginative child. I loved to read. And as I got older and I began wondering about my donor, I began to realize that the characters that I was reading about could fit my paternal mystery. Now, some of the most notable theories, a fairy, a wizard, the Greek god Apollo, and an Irishman. Now, of all of these, the Irishman was the most supported in my everyday life. Though, my mom swears she can't remember the conversation. She was actually the one to validate it, but I remember the conversation perfectly. We were walking to school. I was in fourth grade. It was St. Patrick's Day and we were talking about Ireland and the Irish. And I realized, Irish people had red hair. And my mom always told me that I had red highlights in my hair. So I go, Maybe I'm Irish. <laughs> no, my mom gave me the, parent, uh, the answer that parents give when they aren't paying attention. Yes, sweetie. <laughs> so in my mind, it all started coming together. <laughs> I mean, I knew my mom's family wasn't Irish. They all had tan skin and dark hair. So it had to be my donor dad. I mean, I didn't know much about him, just that he had red hair, or just that he wrote a letter when he donated, 
which meant, uh, but I wasn't sure what was on it. I just assumed that it was what normal people write in a letter, like saying that they miss someone, except he would just be talking about what he liked or what he looked like. But fast forward. It's my freshman year of high school and my mom and I are in the car. I catch a glimpse of my hair and it looks pretty red. And I, I'm thinking out loud and I ask my mom, how Irish do you think the donor is? She's driving, but she manages to turn and look at me and go, he's not Irish, he's German and Scottish. <laughs> and to her, this mix up wasn't a big deal, but it shook me. I would always cling on to what little information I could pull about my donor. And the fact that I could get one thing so wrong shook me. I be, uh, it made me doubt everything that I had known about him. And that day I decided I would find out as much as I could. With my mom's help, I signed up for the donor sibling registry and I found out that I have six half siblings. Now, because the registry encourages you not to use identifying information, such as a personal email, we weren't able to get in contact with any of them. But a month later, my mom came to me and told me that she had found a seventh half sibling. Now, Will is 13 months younger than me, and as soon as we met, our families clicked. The resemblances between the two of us are insane. <laughs> This day, it was the, f uh, the second time that we had met. I was staying at his house, and we both walked downstairs, laughed, and decided that neither of us wanted to change. <laughs> this was not planned. <laughs> yeah. He soon became the nature to my mother's nurture, and I realized that everything the two of us shared were things that I thought had separated me from my mom's family. But really, they were just things that I couldn't see because I'd never been able to explore the side of my DNA. Well, Will wasn't too interested in finding out about our donor, but last summer I decided, uh, I decided to do an ancestry DNA test. My mom tested with me so we could subtract her DNA from mine and I could focus on my donor. But the only, uh, the only paternal matches that, uh, that popped up were fourth cousins or further. Until Evan. He popped up as a close family member, possible first cousin, in October, but it w we weren't in contact until December when I realized that the DNA that we shared was consistent with a half-sibling. And then Evan became number eight. <laughs> yeah. Now, December 24th, Christmas Eve, I was checking from a new message from uh, Evan and his mom when I saw this. My biological father had taken a DNA test. Yeah. So, as soon as my mom and I stopped freaking out and I could take a second to pause, I emailed him. I said, I just got matched as your biological daughter. Are you a donor 2276? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I obviously knew the answer, unless there had been some sort of mix-up, but he responded two days later saying that he was, in fact, donor 2276, and he was open to answering any medical or personal questions that I had. Now, Rick has a son, Talon, who was one of the original six, but I had never been able to put a name or face to him, so I had no idea. But, yeah, three in a row. <laughs> um, then a month later, Remy reached out to Will's mom, or her aunt reached out to Will's mom. She was the first half-sister, which finally got some femininity, woohoo! Yeah. Um, and it was really cool to see that there was another female. Um, but, you know, as I've said, I'm one of the lucky ones. I happen to have a mom who was open to me knowing my history, and a donor who was open to contact. And we've emailed over the past few months. Honestly, it's been nothing like I imagined as a child, though better than any situation where he didn't have magical powers. But I have no proof either way, so. <laughs> yeah. Over the years, I've attributed so much of myself to my unknown half. But I've recently begun to realize that the traits that I got from my mom and the traits that I got from my donor 
are not the collective sum of who I am. Thank you. Oh.